Well, it is an emergency situation in Fort McMurray right now. More flames, more evacuations, and more danger. The wildfires near Fort McMurray are getting worse, and it's a constantly changing situation. I'm Sandra Batson, and this is CBC Edmonton News. Fire crews are doing their best to stop the flames, but they just keep spreading. Our Marion Warnica is in Fort McMurray, and she joins us live right now. Marion, what's happening there? Well, right now we're set up at the McDonald Island Evacuation Center. This is the first place that was open to evacuees. They actually opened it a couple of days ago, but in the last couple of hours, it's certainly got a lot busier. There are between 200 and 300 people registered here, and I'm standing with uh, An Annette Antoniak. You're the CEO of this facility here. What can you tell us about the resources that you've set up for people? Well, it's actually the municipality and the emergency services who have actually set up all the resources within our facility. Um, we're providing food and water and all the necessities. And we have showers and we have cots set up for people who uh, obviously need to stay overnight. So we're doing everything we can to make this uh, a as easy for them as we possibly can. It's, it's a very difficult time. You were mentioning that. I mean, you're a resident here yourself and you've been talking to friends or co-workers who have lost homes at this point. Uh, what have you been hearing from people? Yeah, it's tough. We have uh, very young staff here who have families and obviously we sent them home. We have a very small uh, management team who is here to help out. So we'll be in the kitchens, uh, you know, preparing food uh, just to make sure that everybody's fed. And it, it's a tough time. It, it's difficult, um, particularly when you have people who've lost their home. And just to give an update too, I mean, the information's coming in so quickly, you may not have even seen this list yet, but it just came into my phone. Effective as of 420, so right about now, this is the list of neighborhoods that are under a mandatory evacuation order. So that is Gregoire, Beacon Hill, Abisand, Waterways, Draper, Saline Creek, Grayling Terrace, Downtown Fort McMurray, Thickwood, Wood Buffalo and Dickens Field. So downtown Fort McMurray is actually where this evacuation center is located. Uh, what do you make of the safety of this location right now? You talked about some of the measures that are in place to keep people here safe. Yeah, it, we're very unique here. We're on an island, so you have to come across the causeway, and we're at the very end of the downtown. So where the fire is occurring right now is at the very extreme other end of, of downtown. And we're surrounded by water, um, and we, we also have water trucks here that the municipality has supplied. We have staff on the roofs with water packs. Uh, we're, we're making sure that everything that can be done is being done and we also have the aquatic facility here. So we're, we're completely surrounded by water. Uh, so until we get the order to evacuate, um, we feel safe here. That's right, and the, the, some of the new orders are actually telling folks to go to a different center. That's been set up uh, about 20 kilometers north of Fort McMurray at the Noralta Lodge. So if you've received an evacuation notice within the last hour or so even, that's where you're being directed to go. And I just want to let our uh, audience know at home that you are the CEO of the community facility here. So you're volunteering your time to help with this effort. You're not actually involved with emergency services. So I'm sure that the folks uh, who you're helping here really appreciate that. Is there any take home message you have from people who are staying in the center or who may be coming here? I think that what we're trying to do is make people as comfortable as possible and um, we have a lot of children here so we've opened up our indoor playground and our child minding. We're, we're just trying to make it a, a place to be when you're not in your own home. So, And we thank everybody. It's tremendous what this community is, uh, the outreach from volunteers who have stepped up. I've had calls all day, what can we do? Uh, board members who have done the same. So it's just been tremendous. How many people are involved with this effort right now? How many volunteers would you say right here in this center alone? I can't, I can't really speak to that. But that's being controlled by the municipality, but we ourselves have about 450 employees. Um, so it's a, a great amount. Of, some staff don't want to go home, you know, and they want to be here and they want to help out. We want them to be safe with their own families and their situations in their home neighborhoods. So we're encouraging them to go home and make sure that that occurs. Yeah. Well, Annette Antoniak, thank you so much for speaking with us. They want people to be safe, 
comfortable and while they're out of their homes. That's certainly the message here tonight, and we're going to have updates for you again in just a few minutes. Sandra? Okay, Marion, that was a great interview. A uh, quick question for you, Marion. You've been up there in Fort McMurray for more than 24 hours now. What kinds of things have you seen and heard? What's going on around you? Well, I can start with what I've seen and heard recently, and that is uh, lots of smoke and lots of flames. Um, we were downtown, stationed downtown, because there was going to be a press conference here with an official update about what was actually going on. So I was in this area and I can tell you very quickly is when and how that fire started to sort of flare up. Now this is what officials told us to expect. They did say that it was going to be very challenging to keep the fire break at the east end of town secure as the temperature rose this afternoon. So we really are at the peak of the heat of the day and those dry conditions and the flaring that they said to expect. And that's definitely what you can see in the sky. Like when I was even just walking over here, uh, the horizon just kind of obliterated by this um, yellowish black smoke. What we've also been seeing is a jam of traffic because there is only one highway in, one highway out. People are trying to get back to their homes to get their things. They're trying to get to evacuation centers and they're trying to get gas. Now, this is unofficial, but I did hear from someone that you can't get gas, that their lineups are way too long, uh, that there were dozens and dozens of cars, and that actually some of the traffic jams that were being caused on the highway weren't from an accident or anything, as some people had thought, that they were actually from people lining up to try and get gas. So those are some of the things we've been seeing and hearing even just within the last couple of hours here. Okay, Marion, thank you so much for painting that very vivid picture. Now we will be checking back with you in uh, just a few moments, so don't go too far. Thank you for that. Well, we are constantly updating details about Fort McMurray fires on our website. You can find that at cbc.ca slash Edmonton. Now, this is the most dangerous fire in the province right now, but it's certainly not the only one. I'm joined right now by Matthew Anderson, and he's the Wildfire Information Officer with the province. Uh, thank you so much for joining us in studio You're today. Welcome. So can you tell us, Matthew, what is the wildfire situation uh, in Alberta, generally speaking, right now? Uh, generally speaking, uh, it's it's quite high uh, overall. We, as of noon today, put on a restriction, which applies to the entire forest area of Alberta, and that's due to these hot, dry conditions. And what that does, most of the areas had on an advisory earlier, and this is the next step in the system. And what that does is it limits uh, essentially flames that can cause an ember, so open campfires and things in the forest protection area. So um, I understand then that there are many other fires burning, but when you have a fire like Fort McMurray, how do the priorities change when the flames get so close to you know, a large community like that? Uh, the protection of uh, human life and communities is our top priority, so that's where the resources are being directed right now. We have 11 air tankers currently working on that fire and 12 helicopters, and there are four more air tankers uh, en route to that one. Well, let's talk a little bit about that, who's en route. The sure. Fort McMurray fire is obviously using a lot of resources. Uh, who's there to help right now? Uh, along with, we, with our crews, we have about 100 firefighters, and I believe they're working with the municipality as best they can. Okay. So when so many resources, you know, have to be focused on an area like this, what does that mean for resources for other fires? Uh, the resources are, are available. We make sure that we balance things out. We deploy as much as possible to the largest, most active wildfires, but we have to make sure that we're ready for actioning the other fires that occur throughout the province. But we certainly put our best effort into getting everything on this one. Well, now uh, talking about other fires, we sometimes send crews to help fight fires in other provinces or other areas, and sometimes crews come in to help us. Is, is, that, that's, is that what's happening right now? Uh, at present, it's just Alberta crews, but uh, I understand there may be a request in for some outside crews to come in, but I have not confirmed that yet. So let's talk a little bit about uh, what people can do to help this situation. How can people help to stop these fires from starting to begin with? Certainly, it's extremely hot and dry, as everybody knows out there. So when they're in the forest protection area, they have to take extra precautions. Uh, right now, campfires aren't allowed. Uh, however, propane fire pits and things of that nature, propane and gas fuel fires are allowed and barbecues and such, but they also have to check their off-highway vehicles, make sure that they're clear and dry because there's hot spots that can cause ignitions in these fine fuels. Can you give us an idea, how does this year compare to other years? It seems to be quite uh, starting quite quickly in the year and, and, and out of control very soon. But 
It is. Uh, we're, we're probably about a month, month and a half uh, ahead of schedule. This is the kind of conditions we see later in May, but uh, we're about, a, as I said, about a month and a half early, and that's due to the very limited snowfall and light precip we had over most of the province during the last part of the winter, which has allowed things to dry up a lot quicker. And how do you, how would you say the uh, current, you know, very warm conditions, how does that play into this situation? I mean, we're hitting almost 30 degrees. Uh, we were doing that sort of at the end of April. Now it's May. Mm -hmm. Does that affect the situation? Absolutely. Absolutely. The weather plays a huge factor, which is why it's very difficult to predict what the wildfire season is going to be like, but hot and dry is wildfire weather. Okay. Matthew Anderson, thank you so much for joining us. Matthew Anderson is an information officer with the province about the fires. Well, our CBC crews are on scene as people are leaving Fort McMurray. You can see the sheer panic setting in as well as frustration and acceptance. Take a look. What's going on? I got the best. Oh, this is amazing. Huh. Absolutely amazing. Can you believe how fast it's grown? It oh, yeah. this morning, was it? No, it wasn't. Wow. Sorry, guys. Thank you. Well, it's a disaster, and I find that that's not fair. They didn't even let us take our things and when we asked them. So we lost everything now. Where's the house? It was at the campsite. Right yeah, we asked the cops the other day, two days ago, to take our things out and they wouldn't let us. We only have what we have on our backs. Okay. Yeah. Can you get your name? Miss Joanne. Can you spell your last name? Joanne Bates. Can you spell it for me? B-A-T-E-S. And uh, my boyfriend, John. Hi, John. Sorry to see what's happening here. What do you think about what's going on here? Behind? Oh, it's a disaster. Uh, for everything I worked for the last two years, it's all gone in smoke now. Uh, the, the thing I'm not too impressed about is the officers who kicked us out of the park area when we could have just jumped in the RV and started up and leave. Uh, they didn't let us do that, so we're not too impressed with the officers in this uh, town. I know they're doing such a good job right now, but because they didn't let us leave, we're in not happy for a widow. Yes, we've been living at the campground for a year now and uh, everything was fine till this moment. What, what, uh, what, what was there? I had an RV, uh, like Class A motorhome. I also have a side-by-side, -side, brand new side-by-side, -side, uh, another vehicle, Honda Ridgeline, it all blew in smoke. Two skidoos. Uh, Can you see it from here? Uh, no, actually it's gone now, it probably blew by now. It was the second one to blow in the fire. So, was it insured? Everything's insured except the slides, thank God. Wow. Well, the wildfire situation isn't only dangerous here in Alberta. Now, take a look at this. This is a map posted by the Canadian Wildland Fire Information System. The red areas are at extreme risk for wildfires. The orange areas are at very high risk, and yellow is a high risk. So, as you can see, it's a dangerous situation in much of Alberta, Saskatchewan, and in B.C. as well. Our own Briar Stewart is also in Fort McMurray right now, and here's a little bit of what she's seen. Directing traffic out of town. There's a lot of smoke behind me because the fire has actually breached Highway 63, and, and it's burning on the, the eastern side as well. There are, as you mentioned, 10 neighborhoods under evacuation, and this really developed rapidly over the last hour or so. We had arrived into town. Uh, we pulled up to the side to get some pictures, and the next thing we knew, you could see the flames all along Highway 63, and it happened so fast. So there were people, you know, coming out of their offices, coming out of their trucks, standing on the side of the road. Well, then what happened was uh, you could start hearing popping sounds, and people around here, they knew what those were. It was propane tanks popping. As soon as that started happening, people... Uh, hit, got into their trucks, some people filled up on uh, on fuel at the gas station, and you can see just all the traffic leading town, heading south towards Edmonton. The, the fire breached a part of the highway north of here where I am, and there were uh, there was a roadblock set up by the RCMP, and they were directing traffic off of the highway onto a, another road, and back. And the traffic could then come along this way and go back on the highway. So you can see that there's a lot of traffic moving. I'm at the far end south of Fort McMurray, so obviously this traffic is, is getting through. 
true. But, you know, this is a really chaotic situation made so much worse by the weather. It's very windy here and uh, officials were expecting today to be very challenging. Uh, I, I'm sure they, they weren't expecting this. They weren't hoping for this because this is, has changed uh, just, just so much. And, you know, they're, they're fighting these fires on, on so many fronts. I mean, they're, you can see it's burning over there. Uh, we'll, we'll get my cameraman to move a little bit over this way. There's a fire burning in a neighborhood back that way. That's the, uh, the Gregoire neighborhood, I understand. So things are, are just changing so much. And there was supposed to be a news conference around this time. It's been canceled because obviously officials have their hands full. Wow, and that smoke uh, looks very, very thick over the town. Right now, everyone in Fort McMurray is looking at the weather, and uh, let's take a look now at the forecast. All right, we're going to head back up to Fort McMurray right now where the CBC's Marion Warnica is standing by and uh, she joins us live there. Marion, can you tell us uh, what's going on there right now around you? Well, we're set up at the McDonald Island Evacuation Center where we're, an estimated 200 to 300 people have registered. And I'm here with Teresa Wells, who's lived in Fort McMurray for 15 years. And you just got some bad news. Tell me about it. Uh, well, I actually am under the mandatory evacuation notice as I live in the Thickwood neighborhood of Fort McMurray. So I had to pack up my uh, my cats and my dog. Uh, and actually, I happen to work at McDonald Island Park. So we've evacuated down to the center. And what was that like? What was going through your mind as you're packing up your gear and your cats? It's a completely surreal experience. Um, it's something I've certainly never experienced before and something I hope I never experience again. Uh, and I'm heartbroken for everybody in this community who's going through the same experience right now. It's hard to pack up your life and not know what you're coming home to. Yeah, what, what's that feel like? Uh, I don't have the words. And uh, that's really tough. I, I simply don't have the words for what's happening to my community right now. I've been here for 15 years. I'm very deeply invested in Fort McMurray. I'm very active in the community. Uh, and I don't know what this is going to change in our community. And uh, this is my hometown. It's, I consider this the place uh, I've chosen to call home. And uh, it's heartbreaking to see it today. What do you make of the fluidity of information that's coming in? We have heard of some homes that have burned, uh, but things are kind of coming in dribs and drabs. What does that uncertainty do when you're running through things in your mind? Well, it's certainly really difficult because in the age of social media, every beca everyone becomes sort of a citizen journalist. Uh, so you get a lot of information, but you also get a lot of misinformation. So it's difficult to know what's accurate and what's not accurate. Um, so you have to weigh it. Uh, but it's tough because you know that people are sort of sharing information. Some of them certainly are sharing photos and things of things that they're seeing directly. Uh, and that's pretty frightening feeling scared. How about your pets? You said you had to pack up your your fur family. Yep. Where are they right now? Uh, my fur gang are currently in my office, actually. <laughs> so it's a little bit of cramped quarters for us, but they're safe uh, and I am safe. And uh, I hope everyone else in this community is safe and that no one is injured uh, in this fire. And uh, I believe in Fort McMurray and I believe we're a very resilient community. We always have been. We've faced a lot of challenges and uh, we will continue to be resilient and ready to face the challenge. Thank you so much, Teresa Wells, for talking to us about what is obviously a really difficult situation. And it's a similar situation that a lot of people in this community are in. Uh, like you can see behind me, there's some two to 300 people registered at this evacuation center alone. And I can tell you that although this center is still running, the entire area around it, all of downtown Fort McMurray, has been evacuated at this time. We're reassured that this is a safe place to be, that they have a plan in place for the folks who are registered here. And the list of uh, neighborhoods that are under, under evacuation uh, has grown. So I can read that list out again for you. Gregoire, Beacon Hill, Abbasand, Waterways, Draper, Saline Creek, Grayling Terrace, downtown Fort McMurray, Thickwood, Wood Buffalo and Dickens Field. Now, if you are living in that area or you have uh, family members or friends who are living there, 
you are directed to go to the Neralta Lodge, which is located 21 kilometers north of Fort McMurray. They're saying you should take Highway 63 to the Suncor exit and follow the signs. Now, Highway 63, this is one of the worries that a lot of people had. It's the only road that goes in and out of town. So even on our way over here, we could see it was totally jammed. Uh, even one of our camera people was trying to uh, get to another place was log jammed. A, a trip that would have taken seven minutes under normal conditions took an, over an hour. So these are just some of the challenges that they're facing as they're trying to get people out of town safely. And it's obviously a big challenge for them. Okay, Marion, it looks like it's really bustling there at the evacuation center. Now, you've been up in Fort McMurray for more than 24 hours now, and we've been seeing a lot of pictures coming out of Fort Mac of the flames and the smoke. The smoke must just be hanging in the air. Can you paint a bit of a picture for us about what you are experiencing up there? Yeah, you step outside these doors and we, we set up here for a couple of reasons. Part of it is because of the air quality out there is just so bad. There's a real haze, ash falling from the sky, uh, dark, dark clouds covering the, the town. I knew that it was getting more serious, at least in this area, when I was walking by the mall, which is located just downtown, really main area of town. And I could see what looked like flames or something close to sort of shooting up uh, hundreds of feet over the mall and then someone walked by and said we just got word that they're closing the mall to send people home to their families so it's a definitely a changing situation as you know we're hearing that some homes have burned we don't know exactly where we don't know exactly how many we're also waiting for word on injuries have any people been hurt uh, there's been no confirmation or no word even unofficially that anyone has been hurt so we're waiting on that uh, and we're just waiting for news about uh, next steps uh, and and what they're going to do to really try and keep that fire back uh, as you heard also there was supposed to be a news conference around this time. It was scheduled for four o'clock. They were going to give us an official update about the status of the fire and what was happening. They pushed that back to five o'clock and now they've actually canceled it. They're just saying there's too much going on. Their priority is keeping the flames back and they'll update us when they can. Okay, Marion, certainly there is a lot going on. We can understand that that uh, news conference may be rescheduled and we know that you are there on the ground. So we will be checking in with you throughout the evening to get the updates on that. That's Marion Warnica reporting live in Fort McMurray tonight. Well, we are constantly updating details about Fort McMurray and those fires on our website. You can find that at cbc.ca slash Edmonton. And this is the most dangerous fire in the province right now, but it's certainly not the only one. Well, I'm joined right now by Matthew Anderson. He is a wildfire information officer with the province. And uh, thank you so much for coming into studio and joining us. You're so as I mentioned, this is not the only fire. There are other fires. Give us an idea of what the situation is like right now across the province. Absolutely. Uh, there's about 32 fires in the forest protection area all across the province. Uh, and that's from the north to south. Uh, the largest one that we're dealing with is the one in Fort McMurray, and that's the one that's out of control. There are two others, but the rest are being held or under control. All right, with Fort McMurray being the largest fire, how, uh, how do the priorities change as far as addressing fires across the province when you have such a large one like Fort McMurray? Absolutely. Um, the priorities of the province are human life and communities, and that's clearly the one that's uh, that's what's drawing us to Fort McMurray right now. We have 12 air tankers, four more en route, and 11 helicopters working that fire, and about 100 firefighters. Uh, we will redirect resources as required and requested to help action that fire. Okay. Uh, Matthew a Anderson, thank you so much for joining us to uh, give us an idea of that situation about the fires. Now, our crews are on scene as people are leaving Fort McMurray, and you can see that there is a lot of sheer panic that's setting in, as well as frustration and acceptance. Take a look. What's going on? I got a mess. It's a disaster, and I find that that's not fair. They didn't even let us take our things, and when we asked them, so we lost everything. Now, it was in the campsite. 
Yeah. We asked the cops the other day, two days ago, to take our things out, and they wouldn't let us. We only have what we have on our backs. Okay. Can you get your name? Me, it's Joanne. Can you spell your last name? Joanne Bates. Can you spell it for me? B-A-T-E-S. And uh, my boyfriend, John. Hi, John. Sorry to see what's happening. What do you think about what's going on here? Behind? Oh, it's a disaster. <laughs> Everything I worked for the last few years, it's all gone in smoke now. Uh, though uh, the thing I'm not too impressed about is the officers who kicked us out of the park area when we could have just jumped in the RV and started up and leave. Uh, they didn't let us do that, so we're not too impressed with the officers in this uh, town. I know they're doing such a good job right now, but because they didn't let us leave, we're not happy for them. So the yes, we've been living at the campground for a year now, and uh, everything was fine till this moment. What, what, uh, what, what was there? I had an RV, uh, like Class A motorhome. I also have a side-by-side, -side, brand new side-by-side, -side. Uh, another vehicle, Honda Ridgeline, it all blew in smoke. Two skidoos. Uh, Can you see it from here? Uh, no, actually, it's gone now. It probably blew by now. Yeah. It was the second one to blow in the fire. So, Was it insured? Everything's insured except the sleds, thank God. Certainly a fluid situation and a sad situation in Fort McMurray right now. The wildfire situation isn't only dangerous, though, here in Alberta. Now take a look at this. This is a map posted by the Canadian Wildland Fire Information System. Now the red areas are at extreme risk for fires. The orange areas are at a very high risk and yellow is a high risk. So as you can see there, uh, it's a dangerous situation in much of Alberta, Saskatchewan and in BC as well. Well, our Briar Stewart is also in Fort McMurray right now. And uh, here's a little bit of what she's seen. Directing traffic out of town. There's a lot of smoke behind me because the fire has actually breached Highway 63 and, and it's burning on the, the eastern side as well. There are, as you mentioned, 10 neighborhoods under evacuation, and this really developed rapidly over the last hour or so. We had arrived into town. Uh, we pulled up to the side to get some pictures, and the next thing we knew, you could see the flames all along Highway 63, and it happened so fast. So there were people, you know, coming out of their offices, coming out of their trucks, standing on the side of the road. Well, then what happened was uh, you could start hearing popping sounds, and people around here, they knew what those were. It was propane tanks popping. As soon as that started happening, people... Uh, hit, got into their trucks, some people filled up on uh, on fuel at the gas station, and you can see just all the traffic leading town, heading south towards Edmonton. The, the fire breached a uh, part of the highway north of here where I am, and there were uh, there was a roadblock set up by the RCMP, and they were directing traffic off of the highway onto a, another road, and back and the traffic could then come along this way and go back on the highway. So you can see that there's a lot of traffic moving. I'm at the far end south of Fort McMurray, so obviously this traffic is, is getting through. But, you know, this is a really chaotic situation made so much worse by the weather. It's very windy here and uh, officials were expecting today to be very challenging. Uh, I, I'm sure they, they weren't expecting this. They weren't hoping for this because this is, has changed uh, just, just so much. And, you know, they're, they're fighting these fires on, on so many fronts. I mean, they're, you can see it's burning over there. Uh, we'll, I'll get my cameraman to move a little bit over this way. There's a fire burning in a neighborhood back that way. That's the, uh, the Gregoire neighborhood, I understand. So things are, are just changing so much and there was supposed to be a news conference around this time. It's been cancelled because obviously officials have their hands full. All right, that was our own Briar Stewart, who is in Fort McMurray right now, and that's a little bit of what she's been seeing throughout the day, that smoke just hanging heavy in the air. Now we're giving you a live shot right now uh, of uh, the podium where the Premier will be speaking very soon. We are waiting for Premier Rachel Notley, who will be addressing the wildfire situations in uh, in Fort McMurray. Uh, she is uh, supposed to be speaking uh, anytime soon, and so uh, once she does start speaking, we will be live live streaming uh, her comments and what she has to say. You can always find that on, on our website at cbc.ca slash Edmonton. So as I mentioned, 
Premier Rachel Notley will be addressing the province shortly and she'll be addressing the province regarding the fires in Fort McMurray. Now we do have crews up in Fort McMurray. We will be staying there uh, throughout the night and into tomorrow to bring you the latest details on that. We also have our newscast at 11 o'clock tonight which will be